Ladies and gentlemen, we gathered here today to join two words in holy matrimony and fun. Now, on with the ceremony. Otto, would you take the salitash to your lawfully wedded husband or something? And Salitash, do you take Otto as your lawfully wedded wife and join in together whatever it goes and however it goes, doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. My point here is that Hungarian, the language, is enjoying itself often with compound words. Words that I join together, but two separate words actually. Think about it. Auto means car and salitash means transportation. So if you join these two together, what would you get? What do you think? Obviously, you would get a car transportation, meaning transportation of the cars. Right? Compound words. Not like compound chicken or whatever it's called. Okay, well. This is going to be fun. Today we are talking about, well, mainly about words. I mean, just think about it. Words are fun. They are easy to learn. First you learn the pronunciation and then you learn what the word means. And that's a big part of the language, but not a very, very important from my perspective, because actually you can do that alone. I mean, there are all sorts of books and there are all sorts of things on the internet and I don't want to do what is already been done. Or has already been done. Yeah, that's the correct English, right? Anyway, yeah. Again, this is my second language, so I get to make mistakes and nobody can blame me. <laughs> So you know what? Let's learn, let's learn some words, actually. Here we go. These are all the words we're going to learn. The list is not very big. Uh, well, you have to remember, you create compound words and you don't have to learn them. That's why the two colors. For instance, teher originally means that uh, some sort of load on a truck or on a lorry, for instance. And auto means car, again, I mean, if, if you can remember this far back in the past. So, there you go. I know you can. So, this compound word means truck, a car that deals with loads of stuff. And this one, horgas, originally means a fisherman or somebody who does fishing and felserelesh oh this is long isn't it okay now let's let's do it um, one syllable at a time fel se re leish there you go so um fel se re leish now, we haven't talked about syllables, and Hungarian is very keen on uh, defining syllables. So, let's, let's just believe me for a while now, and, and then later we talk about syllables and stuff. All that silly stuff. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, this one was uh, Horgas, and this one is Felszerelés. The meaning is actually equipment. So this is the equipment of fishing people, people who do fishing. So fishing equipment. But as you can see, you have to, actually you have to um, 
Hold your horses. Let's stop for a small minute, just like a small amount of time. Because um, when, you, when we make compound words, we join them together, we literally attach them to each other, and we have to uh, really think about the meaning. Because we can join two words together in English and it may not make any sense, like um, fun reading or um, dog cat. I mean, you can, I mean, you know, a language is, is pretty flexible, you can do lots of stuff. It's just sometimes it doesn't make any sense. So, although we can make all sorts of compound words in Hungarian, every single one of them has to have a philosophy. Now, most philosophies of these words uh, are actually, they come from tradition. So, from your perspective, right now, at this moment, when you have you, you, you know no more Hungarian than you do now. It's really hard to imagine, or maybe not, but I imagine it's really hard for you to imagine that you can make compound words easily, effortlessly and, and stuff. But of course now you have me. I mean, to work with. That's why I'm doing the video. So when we go back right now to actually uh, do some philosophies or, or create some philosophies about compound words, you have me to explain stuff to you. Now, one thing though, before we continue, and this is really important, these videos are mainly for you to understand the language. I have no way of, of teaching you uh, stuff. I mean, I could teach you sentences, I could teach you a lot of things, but this is not interactive. So all you have is presentations from me. This is like a um, sort of TED talk, if you know what I mean, or a keynote speech of Hungarian. And then you get to enjoy it, you get to smile, hopefully a lot, or maybe cry if it's a sad part. But uh, but mainly you just you're just going with the flow, going with whatever I am giving to you. So, what what I'm giving to you right now, or what I give to you in general, is uh, is an understanding of the language, so you can recognize stuff. And this is the key word. You can recognize these things, so when you read some Hungarian and there's a really long word, you might actually find two words as a root of this word. So now you have to expect that, because now you know, now you learned about it and you can't unlearn it. So here we go. Horgas Felszerelés was the last one, meaning uh, a fisherman's equipment, and now here we go, this one. Villamos, with two L's, you have to remember that when there is two L right next to each other, that's a double letter and you have to emphasize on it. So it's not a Villamos, it's Villamos, even for me. Let me read it for you with normal Hungarian speed. Villamos megalló. And I didn't really emphasize on these things. I, this is natural. Villamos megalló. Fun, isn't it? Anyway, so Villamos means tram and megalló means uh, stop. So this is a stop for uh, a tram like a tram stop, if that makes any sense in English, or because English is a language too, and can be, uh, you know, can make compound words or of some sort. Now here we go, this is an interesting stuff. Auto, you remember that one? Good. So auto and bus. Now, bus is very, very close to bus in English, mostly because it means the same. And auto, well, 
Uh, did you know that in German, if you speak German, you probably know that Auto is pronounced, well, my German is very rusty, but sometimes something like Auto and comes with a Das, Das Auto, and uh, that means, you know, car, but I was just was just an interesting fact. I don't know how interesting that was, but let's go on. So, Autobus meaning it's it's a car it's sort of a vehicle we uh, we usually refer auto as a vehicle although we have an official name it's yarmu but anyway auto is usually um comes uh, before bus although bus can be used alone but this is actually the official name of that big thing transporting passengers autobus okay enough of that here we go with the last one and the last one will be interesting mostly because you already see that these letters are with red written with red I mean so here we go Yeg, meaning ice Paya, meaning um, what does it mean hmm I knew this five minutes ago. No, I'm just kidding. So that's a track or course. So this is basically an ice ring, an ice track or whatever. Actually, we don't say ring. So whatever you want to translate it. But this is with the ice. When people just, you know, they, they ice skate and, and do stuff. And yeah, this is not ice skating, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I suck at this. I have very very clumsy fingers I believe when it comes to uh, ice skating or mimicking ice skating well anyway okay so here we go this is just oh no 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 it's going uh, further away no no oh, well okay now jokes aside remember Yegpaya and let me pronounce it for you one more time, so I could have fun. Yeg, Paya. I know you noticed it. I mean, you you weren't clever if you if you if you didn't know. You you wouldn't have been clever if you hadn't had noticed it, uh, because uh, that's actually two letters. L Y and Y, but pronounced the same. Isn't that fun? Okay, so look, uh, this whole thing with the Y and the Y is um, actually pretty annoying, even for Hungarians, because uh, this is all about tradition. So when you think about it, both the same letters. They are both the same pronunciation and they, since Hungarian doesn't change the pronunciation of letters, if you put letters next to each other, they will always remain the same sounds, which means that probably uh, you could come up with uh, an easy solution saying that, hey, why the heck do we need to use both of them? And this is what we cried about a lot during grammar lessons in elementary school and in high school. Well, I didn't really cry, but I didn't love them. Uh, but I like grammar, as you can tell by the videos. But look, uh, the whole thing with the two letters is purely based on tradition, as I told you before. So, in the case of Yek Payo, Pio is traditionally written with L-Y. Now, the question is, you might be asking to yourself right now, is why the hell are we talking about this instead of learning useful expressions like don't shoot me please in Hungarian? Or uh, where do you keep your tank in Hungarian? But look, since we, these are grammar lessons, we have to talk about these things. So, 
because this whole thing is based on tradition again I'm just trying to put that word into your mind if you don't uh, if, if you're unbothered by it um, so tradition uh, tradition 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 and uh, and you have to learn the words so you can treat them as actually um, just you know these sort of special um, irregular words now b both verbs and nouns and everything expect everything but look uh, you might have noticed that with the um, with the egg pie up here is um, uh, the first one ye is actually the uh, the proper J letter and the second one in the middle of the word is actually um, the L Y uh, double letter thingy. Now remember L Y is one letter. Uh, they are not two letters not written together and N like N Y L Y Y G and Y, D, and all these things are considered one letters. Remember the alphabet? That's why we learned the alphabet. So I don't have to, I wouldn't have to talk about it again and again and again. Okay, now, uh, remember, s letters or words start with uh, ye, the J letter. So it, it's kind of making it easy. And in the middle, you can expect that L Y pair, which is one letter. One exception, and everybody knows this in Hungary, because uh, even I know it, because um, this is so traditional, this is so awesome that for some reason we keep writing it starting with L Y pronounced as Y. Let me show you. All right. Uh, remember auto? <laughs> anyway, so let's write it here. It says again. Uh, it starts with L Y and then a U and then a K. I'm just pronouncing, you know, naming these things in English just for you um, because I like you. Uh, but uh, obviously this would be Y, U and K. So Yuk as it is pronounced and it means hole. Not the whole thing, but a hole in the ground, for instance. Isn't that extremely fun? Extremely fun, I tell you. I hope I, I hope I really scared you that with that little bit, because that is fun. Uh, you know, I mean, learning uh, can be done through uh, sunshine and happiness and can be done through uh, punishment and fear. Now remember um, we fear the lion so we actually learn it pretty quickly well learned it many many uh, thousands of years ago learned it pretty quickly that we should not be friends with the lion. <clears throat> now obviously uh, dogs and cats are fun so we learned uh, to be friends with them. Now, how does that relate to our uh, lesson? Well, I, I don't think so. That's just me rumbling about something. Oh yeah, or well, maybe I'm trying to make a point about scaring you with stuff could help you learn it, but obviously in this case I've got nothing to scare you with. Uh, oh, by the way, there's gonna be a test for you tomorrow. didn't work, did it? Come on, look. I, I'm just trying. I'm really trying anything. Um, I could even try to, I don't know, throw things at you, uh, but I don't think I would help. Anyway, so let's go back to the uke, because uh, this is enough resting for us. Um, so uke cannot be written with the J, the letter J. Uh, that's absolutely wrong, although, because, you know, people are people, they actually came up with a solution to get rid of the L-Y letter, and that was actually um, the 
just leave the, the L there and lose the Y. So, some people actually pronounce this as look instead of yuk, or write it as look instead of yuk. So, that's the solution. Uh, but that's just solution for that one, and the others don't have any solution, so yeah, tough luck. But, um, yeah, so this is about compound words, and obviously, uh, again, I can't stress this enough that you actually have to learn that there are compound words, but you don't actually have to make them because that's not the point of this lesson, or exercise, or video, or whatever you want to call it. Um, you just have to uh, be aware, and when you see something, like, for instance, Jekpaya in Britain, um, you might not have to um, learn the, that that word as a third word you just put yeg and paya together meaning paya the tr paya meaning track and yeg meaning ice isn't that great or teher auto if you remember today's lesson i hope you do i mean uh, i have a terrible memory so i have to write everything and uh, i mean i could put these on the screen but um Actually, uh, and this would be uh, sort of my advice for the videos that you're going to watch later, like the, the fifth episode and, and the sixth and the seventh and whatever, that uh, you can actually take notes. I mean, if you want to take it seriously, because I'm, even though I'm, 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 I'm kind of uh, joking and I seem very, very happy, I actually really uh, am concerned that you don't want to learn. So, uh, if just taking notes and asking questions actually helps me in noticing you learning stuff and uh, so you don't actually have to buy lessons to learn, just, you know, my goal is that you learn about stuff. So, just do that and we're gonna be okay. Cool. Or something, I don't know, gang signs. Last thing for today, let's make a sentence. We're gonna make a sentence. Do -do 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 you see, I, I usually make this mistake because I'm just so get used to the uh, the ye, and this was not intentional. Although this is very useful that I made the mistake, this was not intentional, and I'm not lying. Um, no, seriously, I'm not lying. Look at my face. Look at my face. I'm not lying. Why would I? Just pay attention to that. Come on, do it. Oh, there you go. Okay. I know you can do it. So there you go. Uh, let's analyze this one. I mean, nam obviously it's a it's it's a negative and talalom. I mean, you know, talal that's a root because I know a word like talal and om is the attachment. Remember that one from the uh, the last episode because remember this is something in particular mainly because it has a t and this has an o meaning the and this ha this must have. The verb must have the attachment of the uh, definite, con you know, the definite attachment, the definite conjugation, or con you know. So this is what I call um, full object mode because of this, because of this, and because of that. Let me write it down for you. Full object. Mode. Okay, I hope you can, you know, just, just try to actually just just let it sink in. Three things and stuff. You know, actually, uh, while it, it's sinking in, let me give you an example about um, 
English because actually this is really really interesting uh, let me give you a, a sentence in present perfect I have broken my leg actually my leg doesn't import uh, is not important but look um, this is broken I know I know you can't read it but um, this is supposed to be an O so broken uh, and have these things only two although this this is three but um, only two these when I teach English I always tell people that have as an auxiliary verb and broken as the past participle form of the word break like the third form of the word break after the past tense break broke broken so broken is the third form this knee these things form a present perfect there you go and now you learned something about English uh, it's it's crazy learning about English by the way because you're English but look uh, I hear that uh, people often don't have of grammar lessons in English or grammar class so that's interesting because we had like all the 12 years high school and grammar school and, and at university we didn't have because you know look I, you know I was learning physics and physics doesn't concern itself with grammar but look present perfect needs these two things leave either of them and this is my main point leave either of these out you don't have a present perfect sentence. I mean, what does broken mean alone? What does have mean alone? I have my leg. Actually, I possess my leg or, you know, own my own leg. That's ridiculous. Now, this is also ridiculous if you don't do this, this and this. I mean, this one. So there you go. Magic. Yo. Right? What was that? Doesn't matter. So um, that's my point. That's my point with with insanely horrific uh, whiteboard handwriting. So that that when making a sentence, you really have to obey all the rules, and you really have to apply all the rules. Because if you don't do it, people will not understand you as in English. I have broken my leg, rep tries to show it to you somehow. Because if you say I have my leg, what's that? That's that's silly. Everyone has their own legs. But it would be funny if other people owned the other people's legs, you know, just no matter how rich you are, you can't buy legs. I mean well look, I mean philosophically if 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 you have people moving furniture then yeah but you also buy the whole people with that for an hour or something uh, look it's, language can be philosophical and this is my other point I mean when you're thinking to yourself obviously it's just you can't think through your, through my brain and and oh thank god you don't because my brain is really really weird but my point is that uh, you can't overthink, overthink stuff, but you have to be aware that there are rules and you have to apply them all the time. So my suggestion to anyone who's trying to learn English, especially with me, that I tend to talk uh, about stuff in general, in grammar, and I tend to write a lot of things down with interactive crazy stuff, but taking notes and and creating like you know notes that you can throw away once you learn them just a piece of paper with some rules on them that's very useful because when you're making sentences you might not remember all the things for instance that you need three stuff for the full object mode when you're talking about something in particular you need the the because obviously that's you know that's the definite article or whatever it's called. You need the uh, the T because every object needs a T, and you need the definite conjugation of the verb. Right, right. I know. We are very clever, you and I. And this is cool because uh, remember when um, 
when we we talked about the uh, the pronouns, the personal pronouns in Hungarian, in Hungarian te meaning you and ti meaning you in general, that's different. But when I talk in English or when I speak English, I uh, actually can say you and you can take it personally. But when I say you, well, you can also take it as a, you know, me versus my my fans, you know, if, if so, say English is really cool. Uh, and Hungarian isn't very. Although an I in Hungarian, because we have only one ö, meaning he, she, it, I can just, you know, meet, meet a girl, talk to her, and then later on I can tell my friends about her, but they wouldn't realize, for, you know, for anything, uh, that uh, she is a girl, because I say ö, and that's, that doesn't have a gender. So, ah, uh, yeah, I know, I know, but um, these things are just fun facts about the Hungarian most, uh, Hungarian language, mostly because we have done it, we have finished our job, and that was compound words, and everything else is just, you know, just stuff. But, uh, you know, at some point I have to mention these things, and I really, really have wanted to mention these before, but we didn't have time. And by time, I, 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 I did not mean run time, I mean, you know, just so little information in a video, like compound words, that actually you have the brain capacity, uh, or, or whatever capacity you have, to just relax and just, you know, get all the facts straight. Because I know the la last time and before that, that was, those were hard episodes, I know, lots of stuff uh, that you have to remember. And, yeah, I keep saying, some people keep saying that, oh my god, dude, that's really, really cool that tell us that Hungarian is hard so we can prepare. And other people tell me that, oh my god, dude, it's so sad that you're saying that Hungarian is, is really hard because actually it's not and, and just, you know, takes people's uh, enthusiasm or whatever away. And, well, look, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I... Um, I just wanted to address that because Hungarian, indeed, it's complicated, but it's not complicated because there are a lot of rules. It's complicated because, you know, the rules are kind of chaotic. So, um, just like uh, writing things in English, that's chaotic. Like, you know, with the word enough. Oh yeah, that's fun. Okay, anyway, look. So, we have discussed compound words and and then we can keep continue with, with, with discussing other stuff, but, you know, this is going to be um, fun because we get to make sentences, and then next time we will make some sentences and learn about more attachments, because that's what this thing about, that's what learning Hungarian is about, learning more and more attachments every single time. There is always a new one, and some people accuse me, well, not really, but that's you know, fun dictates it. Some people uh, even accuse me of, of, of just making things up because there are so many attachments. And believe me, there are. Okay, look, this is it. This is the end. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, keep you here. I know you're busy and I really appreciate that you're watching this series even though you have a busy life. So there we go. All right. Have fun. I'm, I'm hopeless.